welcome to Talks in Terrible Audits. Hope you've got your cup of coffee with that. I have mine with me. This afternoon's conversation is about audit committee effectiveness. I'm Derek Jimison, Director of Regions for the Internal Audit Profession in the UK and Ireland. The Chartered Institute of Internal Auditors is the only professional body dedicated exclusively to training, supporting and representing internal auditors in the UK and Ireland. We have approximately 10,000 members um, in, in all sectors of the economy in the UK and Ireland and we're part of 170 countries of members, 200,000 in total. Today's topic is about audit committee effectiveness. How can internal audits support our audit committees and indeed our audit committees in the new normal workplace as we are now entering and will continue to do so for the coming months? Audit committees need to be vigilant, agile, disciplined and engaged, engaged with what is going on in the organisation and the environment around it. What could and should internal audit do to support audit committees? What are we doing now and what do we need to do going forward? I'm going to approach to these three using effectively four sections for the discussion. I'm going to talk about what is internal audit, uh, sorry, what is an audit committee, just a refresher on that. I'm going to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on us and the audit committees. I'll then talk about internal audit and audit committee the relationship as well. Uh, and finally, I'll talk about what does good internal audit look like in terms of its relationship with the audit committee now and going forward. So what does good really look like? We'll answer that question, as I certainly try to. So firstly, um, <coughs> excuse me, if you like Facebook streams and you want to spread the word, and I'm sure you do, apologies for the late start, um, I'm sure you do, please share today, please tell people about this, please share the stream. You can do so by clicking the share button in the corner of your screen. The more of you do that, the merrier. Thank you. So let's begin, audit committees. What is an audit committee? What's the point? So I thought I'd give you some history, just a little bit of history to start us off, some context as to what we're talking about here today. Audit committees are very much an early 20th century invention. Um, if you imagine the scene, the economic depression uh, and the great crash in, in America in the 20s and early 30s and towards the end of the 30s. This is when audit committee officially became recognised and sanctioned, if you like. It was 1939 that the Securities Exchange Commission in the US actually endorsed audit committees and they became visible and formal in, in that type of sense. And that was the start of the journey, the formal journey. Well, audit committees had already begun to exist before that. The reality was, as the crisis went through 100 years ago, it was obvious many, many companies have failed, many, many people were out of work. There were root causes, and some of the root causes related to the governance of organisations. Hence the need for an internal audit later in the century, but firstly, hence the need for an audit committee, a body that looked exclusively at the governance of the financials and control framework within the organisation. So that's the start point. The rest is history. Nowadays we talk about audit committees and there's a range of guidance, a range of documentation on the subject and a range of words that describe what an audit committee is and what it does. For example, the audit committee handbook, good governance in the public sector, the FRC guidance on audit committees and their effectiveness came out in 2013 and then in 2016 and again further documentation in 2018. The country's registration office in Ireland have articulated what it is, what it should do. SIPFA, ICEEW, all the professional bodies that relate to this world have something to say about it, and of course ourselves as well. A lot of words to describe what they are and what they should do. For today's purposes, I'm going to talk about the Financial Reporting Council's guidance uh, on audit committees, published in 2018, possibly the most recent version, and certainly given it is a government-sponsored regulator certainly a key document for the majority of members to pay attention to. And it should give internal auditors an understanding, an understanding we should use as we're working on a day-to-day -day basis. It says, the board has ultimate responsibility for an organization's risk management and internal control systems, but the board may delegate to the audit committee some of these functions. Now, effectively, that is what's been delegated to the audit committee. Key to understand that. It goes on to talk about in section 41, the company's management is day-to-day -day responsible for risk management. We all know that. 
and internal control systems, including financial controls, and these should form part of the company's day-to-day -day business processes. Very, very clear, very, very simple. If oversight of the function is to be delegated, i.e. from the board, the audit committee, the audit committee should consider what role it can play in promoting sound risk management and effective internal control, including operational and compliance controls, and review these systems. I'm not going to read anything else from that, but you get, if you refer to this document, very clear, very simple articulation of what the audit committee is there to do. It's therefore a critical oversight function in the organisation, and it's therefore also a critical need for the function to be provided by robust, robust information and understanding. And that's where we come in nowadays. The internal audit function provides a huge percentage of that and a huge value to internal audit. So it's from internal audit to the audit committee. If we don't do our job particularly well, it undermines the effectiveness of the committee. So a theme reminder, if you're just joining us belatedly, welcome to our live stream, talk to internal audit. Today's theme is audit committee effectiveness, which I've broken down into four key themes. What is an audit committee? Audit committees themselves and the impact of COVID-19, internal audit and audit committees, and the relationship between the two, and what does good look like? Remember, if you enjoyed today's show, please be sure to like it and please be sure to share it and tell your friends. So the second part of my session here is the impact of the crisis. Uh, I think it's fair to say everybody's been impacted by it to some extent, uh, and therefore it's impacted audit committees as well, both personally and in a business context as well. What a year this year has been, and it's still over in August, and I still have my holidays. It seems hard to imagine but in 10, 20, or even 30 years' time, it'll be a memory to us. And we'll be telling our young ones about it, our children. I will tell my great grandchildren, possibly, when that time, hopefully. Um, life will have moved on, and we'll have living distant memory of these things. But it is different for everybody just now. It's different for everybody in the business context and the personal context. It's not identical. But, that, but there are typical things that have been happening here. All organisations have been affected, affected. All audit committees have had impact as well. When we go back to the beginning, what are they accountable for, responsible for, overseeing, understanding what's going on, challenging, and getting guidance and interpretation and insight from us about what is going on in the organisation. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what the committees? How often do they meet? Most of us would probably say roughly every three months. There's a routine to it. Papers go out, maybe one or two weeks before the meeting. Or the committee members invest several hours, many, maybe many hours, reading the documentation. I've seen board plaques, I've seen audit committee plaques that number several hundred pages. Lots of time to be spent reading, understanding, challenging in your own mind about what's going on in the organisation and comparing to what you had before. So I'm taking notes as an audit committee member, I'm understanding things, I'm reflecting the previous minutes and actions and speaking to fellow committee members about what is this telling me and what, what do I need to ask and what do I need to understand better. I then attend the audit committee, potentially significant travel, I might have to stay overnight, away from home, all in preparation for this. I might have a meeting in the morning with my fellow committee members so we can share thoughts and ideas and then we go into the meeting. A couple of hours perhaps, maybe with a tea break or a lunch break in the middle. That's my routine. Uh, during the course of the meeting, we'll ask questions, we'll get insights, we'll suggest action, etc. Minutes will be taken and then I'll reverse, I'll go back home again. And in a sense, that's the cycle that goes on. But in reality, as the crisis hit, that cycle couldn't work anymore. First of all, you can't get face to face. The travel's out of the window. Secondly, do you really want to wait three months for insight on what's going on? No, it just doesn't work. The world's changed. The impact of the virus has begun to hit. Audit committee members start to feel uncomfortable, both at home, domestically, and at work. What's going on in the organisation? What are the issues? What are the risks? Now, that's easy to understand when you think about it in that way. When you also consider the accountability they have for the organisation, it's potentially better to understand that these guys and ladies are worried, they're worried on behalf of the organisation and they're worried on behalf of themselves. How can I help? How can I do my job better? Questions will be asked at the beginning of the crisis. 
the people and the staff okay? What measures have been put in place to maximise their safety? Are they working? What's the update? What's going on? Operations. What are the major areas of impact on the business? What might happen next? What's going on? Is the crisis resilience plan operational? Is it working? Who can I speak to? Customers, what's the impact? Are we making things secure for them? What's their response? Do we have any customers left? Finance, finally finance. What's the impact? What's the projected impact on the books, the income, the expenditure? What's the response? Many, many questions. That's just a few of our four or five topics. Major impact. Why am I going on about this? Because that's the accountable body. So what do they want to do? They want significant answers to significant questions. Very, very simply meaningful answers to these questions. <coughs> they can't phone up the executive every two minutes. They can't phone up internal audit every two minutes. They get in the way. Internal audit would say get out of the way. The business would say get out of the way. So the reality is they need to put a new engagement plan into place. But it's very dynamic, it's very fast paced. Things that we didn't expect to happen are happening. The change is essential. We need to change what we do to help the audit committee fulfill their responsibilities. You may be aware that the Institute ran a survey um, in the not too distant past about the impact of the COVID crisis. We'll be reporting that over the course of September, where we spoke to, well, we surveyed a whole range of heads of audits, and we, and we actually spoke to good number of them as well. And we asked them questions around what's the impact? Considerable. Absolutely considerable. I'll give you some details later. <coughs> Nothing I'm about to say about audit committees is critical. Nothing I've said so far is critical and it won't be. The reality is everybody's different. But some of the things we have heard are audit committees were being deferred. They couldn't get together. The business wasn't able to give them information. Internal audit didn't have much to say because it wasn't, they weren't ready for anything. Audit committees meeting virtually instead of face to face. Great, because now we've got over the hump of not being able to travel, we're meeting virtually. Great. But sticking to the existing routines, so the usual table papers, the usual cycle of activity. Is that right? Is that right in a crisis when things are moving at the pace? I would suggest not. Audit committees do everything above. But supplementing this with monthly meetings with the head of audit to understand what's going on. It starts to sound more engaging then. Uh, all of the above plus meeting virtually with the head of audit on a weekly basis to understand what's going on. Also doing the same with the executive, but trying to get closer, but scheduling it so it's manageable. Sounds more engaged, sounds better. And even in some cases, we had audit committees and audit committee chairs engaged on an ad hoc or daily basis at the beginning of the crisis, purely because they felt they could add value and the business, the organisation genuinely felt they were getting value. Objective challenge, a really good challenge for the business to take on board. So we have a whole range of responses from audit committees in the crisis. But as I went through that list, they got more and more active, more dynamic. I genuinely think that's what we, we needed and we've got. There were, however, some examples from our survey when no audit committee engagement took place at the start of the crisis until the time of our survey towards the end of June. I just asked you to think about, is that relevant? Is it valid? Do any responsibilities of the audit committee? Is it right? And what is internal audit doing about that? Anyway, I'm not going to be critical, I'm just observing, and it sounds a bit critical, but I'm not there. I wasn't the audit committee, I wasn't the head of audit, I just beg a question around that. So hopefully, over the last few minutes, you've understood a couple of things. One, yes, I'm emphasising this, they're massively important functions. Two, they need to react to a crisis like anybody else does, but they need to react in a way that's manageable and doesn't interfere with the organisation but they have responsibilities, so they need the engagement. And they do need it with internal audit, because to be frank, internal audit is independent and objective and can give a strong view about what's going on at a time when it's critical to know what's going on. So another theme reminder for you just now, if you're just joining us, welcome to our live stream, Talk to Internal Audit. Today's theme is Audit Committee Effectiveness. I've broken it down into four key areas. What is an audit committee? The impact of the crisis, COVID crisis, 
and they'll be talking about audit committees and the relationship with internal audits. And finally, we'll talk about political groups today. I've just talked through the impact of COVID-19, and we'll now move on to a discussion around internal audit and audit committees themselves, the relationship. Remember, if you enjoyed today's session, please be sure to like it, please be sure to share it, and please be sure to tell all your friends. Internal audit and audit committee affect this, the third part of this. Clearly, internal audit plays a key role in providing the audit committees with critical information which helps them understand their duties and helps them meet their accountabilities. Critical information usually takes the shape of the audit report, or whatever narrative normally goes into it for the audit department function. The same rule applies in a crisis, and we're in one, and we may well have another couple coming. The same rule applies to set the dynamic as different. Everything is changing. It's immediate. The priorities change. The risks potentially change quite considerably. So the focus of audit has to change as well. There is no point checking what we planned to check last week if it isn't happening this week. There's a big point in checking something that is valid in the sense of being critical to respond to the crisis and help the organisation to survive. That's where the focus has to go. I'll never forget a guy called John McMillan, uh, an institution of mine from the Institute when I first qualified, uh, or tried to qualify many, many years ago. Um, the scene for you is Saturday morning of a weekend school in the east of Scotland. Uh, we had gone to the study school for the weekend on the Friday for the dinner to meet and greet the tutors and to relax a little bit. Um, the scene was Saturday morning. Um, as many people might know me, I wasn't necessarily in the best state of affairs Saturday morning, but nobody was. But we were talking about the importance of auditors and management and the relationship between the two and the information share between the two. And John actually said to everybody else, quote as best I can, uh, Derek Cumley has an expression on his face which summarises what we need to remember about the information and the importance of it for an audit committee. Vacant. Information must be valid, accurate, complete and nice for times. So if you ever get stuck understanding how important information is, just think of Derek's face. I hope most people have forgotten that, but I just thought I'd share it because vacant, whilst I might have been vacant at the time, has stuck with me ever since. Thanks, John, if you ever see this. Thank you very much. It's a true story. Uh, and I'm going to stay vacant for a moment or two, if you don't mind. Consider the audit committee's role, its concerns about the organisation, its challenges, its accountabilities, and then consider the possible reason the internal audit wouldn't need to adapt to changing circumstances. There are no reasons the audit would not adapt. It's critical that we do. Again, we've spoken to many heads of audit who have seen, and we have seen from them, that they've reviewed the risk universe to reflect the change in environment. They've revised the audit plan to take out the audits that are no longer relevant, or certainly currently not relevant, and replace them with audits which are relevant. They focus on critical controls. At a time of crisis, that is fundamental, and the critical controls in an organisation can sink it in the time of the crisis. So they focused on them at the expense of maybe a longer audit with slightly less important controls as well. They've shortened the audit process. They've focused audits on those big controls, and the audits have lasted a few days rather than potentially a few weeks. They've abbreviated performance reporting performance of the organisation, of the control. They've issued one-page reports, for 20 pages used to be the norm. They've managed to get the report out within a day. In some cases, we've had of the day, the day of finishing was the day of reporting. They've engaged in regular calls with the audit committee chair to feedback on everything they've been doing, and so forth and so forth. A lot has changed in terms of how internal audit has engaged over the last few months. Perhaps the key message out of all that is we changed, we're able to change, we're added value. It, it's good to know that you've added value. We need to bottle that and work out what is good, how to keep it and how to do it in the future. We can't go back to what we did before just because we used to do it. So the message is stay relevant, keep adding value, but find a better way of doing it 
all the time. Richard Chambers, the Institute's CEO in the US, uh, has previously talked about the speed of risk. If you've heard about it, good, I can carry on. If you haven't, by all means, go and have a look at that definition tonight, at that narrative tonight. It's very much about how risk can change and it can impact particularly quickly. You may have also heard the phrase of risk as velocity or other similar phrases, but just to suggest that there's a dimension here which is pace and change and time. In simple terms, risk realize just like that, an impact exceptionally quickly. The risk for internal audit is we don't recognize that and report too slowly. We report after the risk is crystallized. That is not good internal auditing. So we have to be dynamic, we have to be as quick as we can to get the key messages out. Robust insofar as we do the right work, the right way to get the right message, but we have to report quickly. It's absolutely critical going forward. I once reviewed the internal audit report on cross stress for a global organisation in, in a previous role. The planning phase typically took a week uh, and included the, tra the travel time from the site where the audit function was to the site where the audit was taking place, which might have been a flight. During the planning phase of that week, everything was done, apart from the flight booking, um, the scope, the documentation around it, so the, the testing programs, etc. The field work would take place over a one or two week period, and the draft report was discussed and agreed and outlined as they left, as they left the site to go home. The final report would be issued a week later by Wednesday. Why so quick? Well, quite simply because the organisation valued the internal audit, the internal audit's work so much, they wanted to hear. They wanted to hear what they thought, and they wanted to do it quickly. Why did they value it? Because it was, was impactful, it was correct, it was giving them risks that weren't being managed effectively, and it was suggestions that they needed to take action quickly. The organisation wanted to hear more of that. They had bought the internal audit concept completely and had an insatiable appetite, if you like, for getting the messages. Great place to be. Maximum value if you catch something before it finally crystallises. Crystallizes my apologies. Minimum value at the time between finalizing the field work and finalizing the report is enough time for that risk to crystallize. Or it is not good enough knowledge at that point. If you got, get your car serviced, use another simple analogy. If you get your car serviced, you don't want to be driving the car two weeks later with a child in the back to get an email pinging to you to say this car is not roadworthy. Please get out of the car. Please stop. It's too late for that point, potentially. You might have crashed, to be honest. So what can we learn? Quite simply, we need to keep our scope tight. We need to be clear what the risk is. This adds value to our audit service, to the audit committee. We need to be relevant, absolutely relevant to the timer. So our, our focus might be absolutely correct in terms of scope, but not the right time for the audit cycle. We need to be relevant to audit, keep it tight, better value. We need to be quick at reporting. The news is now. Tomorrow it has to make the news relevant. And a final comment. We need to ensure our reports are written, valid, accurate, complete, and nicely timed. I'll never forget that. Um, please, please do that if you're not already. The audit committee wants it and absolutely needs it. The bit I didn't talk about was provide insights and foresight. Don't just report what you've done. Don't just report what it's told you. Think about what it means in the context of the organisation. Think about what added value, thought process you can get. Or it has a massive level of knowledge and understanding of the organisation. If it joins dots between different reports and different levels of knowledge, it can add considerable value and insight. So a theme round before you. If you're just joining us, Welcome to our live stream, Talk to Internal Audit. Today's theme is Audit Committee Effectiveness, which I've broken down into four key areas. I've broken it down to what is an audit committee, the impact of COVID-19, the relationship between internal audit and audit committees. And finally, I'll be looking at what good, good looks like. Remember, if you enjoyed today's session, please be sure to like it, share it, and please tell your friends. So lastly, what does good look like from an audit committee perspective? Well, the best people to ask are audit committees. 
So I'm going to give you a few examples of people you have spoken to. I can't name everybody, but I will name some. <coughs> Lord Smith of Kelvin um, was a huge advocate for the internal audit profession over many, many years. Uh, and for those of you who don't know who he is, please use the Google search and you'll find out. Big, big advocate. Uh, some of the words he used to describe internal audit, and he said this at the Scottish conference a number of years ago, he described his internal audit, his ideal internal audit function as my trusted advisors, my eyes and ears, my conscience, and the person who warns me before it's a problem. So you can take from that, the head of audit is critical, absolutely essential. And what's the actually said that? He's critical, essential, essential to me do my job well. He also said, my head of audit, and he had three at that time in different organisations he was chair of audit committee on, my, one of the best head of audit is both responsive to my needs, but is increasingly proactive and predictive. He gets there before I'm thinking about it, makes me think, makes me wonder. So, he was happy with that. He also commented on a couple of other things. Reporting has become speedy. I can't remember if that's the correct word, but reporting has become speedy and focused. They get into the detail, but they're getting, giving it to me in a speedy way and a focused way. We don't want a situation where it takes too long. We're already focused on that. We do want to identify themes, um, the themes and connectivity and so forth, as I said, insights beyond just the scope of the audit. And Law Smith is very positive about that as well. The chair of an audit committee uh, for a public sector suggested that she believed that she had a fantastic relationship with the head of audit. This is very recent. That she had built that relationship over, over a relatively short period of time and that effectively they were now a team that she relied entirely upon the integrity of the individual and the team behind the head of audit. She was delighted to have an internal audit function that gave her insight. Concerned her when they gave key messages that she wasn't hoping for, which was the opposite of what she hoped for, but were critical. They were identifying themes and trends. They were more collaborative than she'd ever seen before, and now she's starting to understand the real value of internal audit. Great feedback. The chair of a smaller private sector audit committee has advised me in discussions that the crisis has been a revelation in terms of internal audit and what they're doing and how they do it. Lovely word to hear, revelation. We have moved from important providers of an independent view to an essential provider. They've restructured the plan, they've workshopped it to the point where everything is absolutely relevant. The execution of the work has ensured they've kept an eye on nearly everything if at the right level. The reporting's increased impact because it's quicker to the point that it now encourages action from everybody who needs it. Excellent. How do we help audit committee chairs feel like this? It's a simple question to ask. I'll we'll go back to where I said before. All the points are made already. Have a read of the results of our COVID survey when it comes out. You'll be insightful, I hope. Have a consideration about how dynamic your function was, and I'm sure everybody's was, I don't doubt that. Have a consideration about what else you could do if you had your time again or for the next time. Think about these things. Pick 10 topics or actions that you think your team could improve or adapt from whatever they've got to just now. See if you can balance them over the phases, these 10 topics over the phases of the audit, the plan, the field work, the reporting. See if you can balance them and see if you can find an option for improving something. Whether it's pace or focus, I don't care. See if you can do it. Because I think as I heard today, from the range of people actually today, internal audit has imagination, it has ideas, it should get on and do some of them. I would be delighted to offer my support for your work in raising the profile of the profession. This is what somebody said, Chair of an Audit Committee from the FTSE 50. I would be delighted to offer my support for your work in raising the profile of the profession and the relationship with the audit committee and in establishing a view of what good looks like. I'm sure I will learn something myself from this. So I thought I would quote something that's been said recently. We have a chair of an audit committee who wants to learn something, believes he will, and wants to help. The relationship between audit committee and internal audit is vital. So to summarise and to recap, 
That was the session on audit committees. It's vitally important for us to understand them better. It's vitally important we read the regulatory requirements for the audit committee. What are their roles and responsibilities? If we don't, how can we be sure we're giving them maximum service and helping them fulfill their role? Please do some bedtime reading around this. If it's that boring and it helps you fall asleep, good, but pick it up again tomorrow and read it during the day. It is very important. Please have a look at the web pages, our web pages on our COVID journey with Heads of Audit, Heads of Audit Forum, virtual forum. Please have a reflection what that's been saying. It's been talking every week about how internal audit has changed, what it's done, the feedback, the challenges, the feedback to what they did after that. It is quite insightful. For information going forward, we'll be establishing a page on our website specifically for audit committees. Uh, we've been discussing, as I've mentioned, with a number of audit committee chairs, um, about their experiences of internal audit. We believe, and we know this now from talking to them, that we have a need as a profession to explain what we do a bit better, so they understand us a bit better, to help you do your job better. We also believe that we can give them some more guidance and direction around what we're doing, so that page will be created for audit committees. Please help ensure when it gets up there, please help ensure you tell people about it, because what we'd like to do is collaborate more with audit committees. If you do that, it helps them challenge you, the audit functions, to give them better service. So if you're just joining us today, the show was all about audit committee effectiveness, which I broke down into four key areas. What is an internal audit committee? The effect of COVID-19 on audit committees? The relationship between the internal audit and the audit committee? And what good looks like? And so I've given you several quotes from that. The live stream is available afterwards, for those of your friends and colleagues who may have missed it, please encourage them. Follow all, all the exciting things we do for the Institute uh, activities on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and through our website as well as Twitter. And as a member, you have access to the latest edition of Audit and Risk magazine, which is available on our website. Please read that. Please engage with us and tell us what you think of what you're seeing. I'm happy to take questions, uh, as I know Liz is at any point in time at Derek. Jameson at iia.org.uk. Next week, uh, you can join us at four o'clock on Like Me at quarter past on Thursday for another informal live chat as we continue to support you through this difficult time and with key insights and knowledge. Don't forget your coffee, don't forget your tea, your whiskey, whatever. Please remember, talk to internal audit. We are listening. Thank you very much and stay safe.